21, 22. And I found myself uh, with an income for the first time and a lot of free time uh, and no responsibilities whatsoever, you know. And even in the summers, I, I went away. I got away from, it's a strange thing to say, that I went from Dublin to London to get away from distraction. <laughs> because there was plenty of distraction, but I suppose I, I got away from my friends. And that was a deliberate thing, you know. It was great. It was a holiday and also work. That, that's the way I saw it. And I, you know, just rented a one-room flat and just stayed there for three months and kept writing. That was rubbish. What I wrote was absolute rubbish. And I, but it didn't matter. Because by the time you know I was coming home at the end of those three months, I had you know too too many too many pages full of uh, writing to to stop. I do remember when I wrote plus my first published published book, The Commitments. That's 24 years ago. I would have been writing. I, did, I finished it in June of 1986, so I would have been coming towards the end of it. 24 years ago. And I do recall feeling very excited, and uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of. I wrote it mostly in the evenings because I was uh, working in the daytime. And then I remember one particular break. The, it would have been Easter of that year. Two weeks off in Ireland for that holiday, working right into the night, and then you know sleeping during the daytime. I thought that's what you were supposed to do. You know, now I'm quite happy to. Work, I'm quite happy to work office hours. You know, why not? <laughs> why would I? <laughs> but at the time, I just thought, and I, I, in fact, it was probably a good idea because it did feel a bit special. You know, that I was writing at five in the morning when everyone else around me was either fast asleep or getting up to go to work. I do remember loving it at that point. Yeah, that I was really enjoying myself. But you can go through long periods when not particular. You know, you're not particularly enjoying it. But uh, I'd rather be doing it than anything else. I don't plan too meticulously before I start. A lot of the planning is in the rejection of things, and 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 like actually, um, on occasion, an idea that wasn't in my head at the beginning of a day can end up being a route that the story takes that could last for weeks, maybe months. You know, so I'm open to that type of. Uh, um, I don't know. Spontaneity isn't the word because I'm after all I'm at a desk and I'm you know, anticipating this type of thing. But uh, it's all very tentative, really. You could never build a house on it, you know, that I often say that, a, you know, a screenplay is like the foundation of a movie, but uh, it has to be rock solid. So it's not until it's absolutely finished that actually it solidifies and becomes something finished and that, that, that I can talk about with any degree of confidence. Inevitably, it was a bit distracting. That sounds very negative. I mean, I'll take compliments from any quarter, so to have won the thing was great. I'd been shortlisted before. To win it, it was great. And the, uh, the risk of sounding silly, it was a great night. You know, uh, uh, my sisters lived in London at the time and had friends. We, we, had a, we, were, we were meeting up to have a party regardless of whether I won the thing or not. But I won it, so it was a great night. But I went straight home the day after, you know, and battened down the hatches, really, didn't do interviews, uh, decided because we came home late. This, is, this seems quite trivial, but it is actually quite, on a human level, quite important. There was nothing to eat in the house, you know, we'd, uh, we'd, we'd two babies, and, but there was, uh, there was nothing for us to eat in the house. So I went around to the local ship or the fish and chip shop. But this was the day after I won the Booker Prize, you know, and I'd been on the cover of all the newspapers and the rest all throughout Ireland. It was big, big news. It was like sports almost. But I went around the corner to the chipper, got the cod and chips or whatever, and nobody behind the counter knew or cared. And uh, it was, so it was like, that was great. That was great. You know, I didn't feel let down at all, you know, that they, they didn't offer me a 10% discount. <laughs> <laughs> I would strongly advise them to be working on the second book before the first one comes out. Consign the first book to the past as quickly as possible. Obviously keep an eye on it, you know, love the experience. Uh, if you're a book lover, you're going to love getting your own book, probably in the post or into your hand. That may be the high point of its career, you know, but be working on the second one. Live in the present tense, not the past. Get rid of the first one as quickly as you can. Don't wait until it's out before you start the next one because uh, there'll be too much riding on the first one. So get working on the second one as quickly as possible. 
that's what I would uh, strongly advise anybody to be really immersed in the second one when the first one arrives. Mm -hmm.